Yep, that's right, we got another GTA 5 before GTA 6. In this quick video, I'll show you how to optimize a GTA 5 Enhanced for the best possible performance. That being said, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. We're only going to be speaking about the in-game optimization to get the best performance out of your system. Keep in mind, when 5M releases for GTA 5 Enhanced, I'll probably have another update guide then. That should help you get even more performance out of your system for 5M. But for now, let's talk about the actual game itself. So, GTA 5 Enhanced is slightly smaller than GTA 5 Legacy simply because of different compression and things like that, so it's a slightly smaller download, but for the most part, it's mostly the same under the hood. Except, of course, we've got the brand new edition of, well, you guessed it, ray tracing. Besides that, there's not too much else that's majorly different. For the most part, in Enhanced, as soon as you turn off ray tracing over here, you should most likely get the same performance as you do on Legacy. Simply hit a Escape, head across to settings, followed by graphics, look for enable ray tracing and turn this off. Then hit spacebar to apply your changes and once you do, you'll likely jump up to FPS that you were previously at in GTA Legacy. As you can see, I'm sitting at a solid 133 FPS which feels real good. In fact, bringing in an FPS counter, there you go, that's my performance on a 3080 Ti at 2K. So for the most part, performance should be mostly the same, but if you're coming here with a fresh install and all of your settings reset, I've got you covered anyways. Hit escape, head across to settings at the very top, followed by graphics, and in here, we'll start off at the very top. Ignore suggested limits, leave this turned off, pause game on focus loss. If you wish to pause the game when you tab out, so you get better performance in Discord, YouTube, etc turn this on and you should get a better experience. Right below this, I'd recommend choosing full screen here for slightly better input latency on a lot of systems, but on super recent versions of Windows 11, the difference between full screen and borderless full screen is practically nothing. If you choose full screen, make sure your resolution matches your display and of course your refresh rate as well. Then right below this, frame limit, turn this off unless you're trying to stream or record and OBS is lagging, for example, or YouTube videos are, are lagging, etc. In which case, turn this on and cap your FPS to slightly below the FPS you're getting in game. So if I'm getting 130, I'll cap it to the highest that I can, which is 120. That way we clean up just a bit of headroom for other processes on our system. For me though, I'll be leaving this off for the max performance. Then VSync should definitely be turned off. However, if you're experiencing micro stuttering and weird issues, try setting VSync to half instead. For most people, leave it off. Then in video reflex, I would recommend turning this on. And if you're heavily CPU limited, turn this to on plus boost. For me, I'll leave this on just on. Once we apply our changes here, we should see hopefully an improvement in performance, especially if you had VSync turned on. Now your FPS should be uncapped from 60 or whatever it might have been before. Then looking down to presets, for the most part, the default will probably be around very high, if not high on most systems. And if you have a GPU that supports ray tracing, high RT or very high RT are likely the default settings. For the most part, GTA 5 Enhanced is just GTA 5 Legacy, but with ray tracing. If you want ray tracing, definitely leave this on. Otherwise, turn this off for a big performance boost. If I apply changes as very high RT, you can see we suddenly dropped to 90 FPS. If we turn off ray tracing, however, apply changes, we instantly jump all the way back up to 123, which is a big improvement. With ray tracing enabled and all of the options below it as low as possible, we're sitting at around 122 FPS. The last option, BVH quality on high or very high, the only two options we have, seem to have very small, if not no performance impact. Ambient occlusion takes me from 120 to 114 between off and ultra. The lowest option we have is high and this takes me from 120 to 118, so a small loss in performance. Global illumination from off at 118 to ultra drops us all the way down to about 90 FPS. So we lost probably 30 FPS here alone. The lowest option we have is high and that brings us back up to 110 off. 116, 117. So a small, maybe 8% FPS cost between having this off and high. If you're gonna be using ray tracing, you'll probably play in the lowest option here, which will likely be high. Then ray traced reflections from 110 with it off to 93 with it on, we've lost about 20 FPS, which is pretty big. If we instead go from off at 110 to the lowest option we have, which is high, we drop all the way down to 97-ish. So maybe about a 13 to 14% FPS cost, if not a little bit more. This is a 
much more expensive ray tracing option. And if you're going to be playing GTA 5 enhanced, windows are probably the number one thing that you're going to be walking across, seeing yourself in, etc. And having ray traced reflections turned on is something you're likely going to want to bite the bullet for, but it is one of the more expensive options. So if you want just a better lighting and not necessarily better reflections, turn it off. From 110 with ray traced shadows off to ultra, we've only moved down about five to six FPS, which is pretty much nothing. Ray traced shadows is the lightest ray tracing effect we've seen this far. From 110 off, to 106 high, to 104, 105 very high, followed by 104, 105 for ultra. Ray traced shadows are definitely gonna add some more life to your world. You can see this apartment changing quite a bit. So just based off of the few shadows here, from ultra to off, they all but vanish with the lowest option high, at least giving us some ray traced shadows and a lot more life to our GTA 5 world. For that reason, this option I definitely would recommend having on. And enabling ray traced reflections is of course on you from 103-ish FPS to 96, we've lost about 10%. So if you're comfortably sitting way above 100 FPS, you can probably leave this on and be happy. So my optimized ray tracing options will either be everything pretty much on high with BVH on very high, or everything on high except for ray trace reflections set to off. Set these, of course, to whatever you wish, as ray tracing is the main attraction to this version of GTA 5. Moving down from 95 FPS, something that will pretty much instantly gain you FPS is frame scaling or upscaling. The options we have are off, DLSS, FSR3, FSR1, and sampling. Don't use sampling at all. Use preferably FSR3, or if you have an NVIDIA GPU, select NVIDIA DLSS. Then from the DLSS quality or FSR quality, select quality here for pretty much an instant boost in performance. From 95, activating this, I've moved all the way up to 110 and we've pretty much gained back all of the performance we just lost by enabling ray tracing. So for me, this is probably where I'll be playing even without optimizing the rest of the options below. Of course, if you're clawing for FPS, move this down to balance, but anything below that, you'll start to notice weird visual artifacts and glitches, especially while moving around quickly. If you're still getting way above whatever FPS you're comfortable with, consider pushing it to DLAA instead, or negative AA for FSR. By choosing either of these, you'll essentially be running a DLSS or FSR on your native resolution, upscaling it and making it an even better quality with super high quality anti-aliasing. So from 91-ish FPS with DLAA on versus nothing, I'm sitting at around 95 FPS. So for the cost of maybe four or three frames, it's definitely worthwhile in my case, or especially yours if you're getting better FPS than 100 to use DLAA or native AA. I'll be leaving mine at quality just for a slight FPS push towards my 144 hertz of my monitor, giving me a smoother gameplay experience. Sharpness is entirely your preference, and of course, anti-aliasing should preferably be handled by one of these upscalers. Anything that says TAA is likely just going to be blurry and not good to look at. So again, choosing native AA is going to help your game look even better just to begin with as we're getting rid of TAA anti-aliasing. From there, moving down to quality, we can get more fine control over our options. First of all, we'll start off with texture quality. For the most part, this depends on how much VRAM you have available in your system. You can see your VRAM allocation and budget at the very top. Some people have said that they lose quite a bit of performance pushing this to anything above normal. And if that sounds like you, try pushing anisotropic filtering to X16, which should give you a pretty big boost in the sharpness and quality of textures, even though you're not actually loading higher quality textures. If you have more than enough VRAM, raise this to high, if not very high, and benefit from better looking textures. Although unfortunately, this particular option does require you to restart GTA Online or the single player if you choose to change it. So try and change this from the main menu preferably. That being said, you should test the difference between normal and high on your system to see if you suffer from micro stutters and things like that, as the anisotropic filtering trick may do it for you. Then shader quality, while this used to have quite a big impact between very high and normal, 
I'm still sitting at about pretty much the exact same performance no matter what I choose here, which is a little bit odd, but previously I recommended setting this down to normal. In my case, I'll leave it at probably high, if not very high, that's fine. Then particles quality, leave this on very high for a small performance boost. However, of course, you will need to restart your game once you change this. Tessellation, very high, shouldn't have too much of a performance impact. If we push this down to normal, you can see practically no change in performance once more. So high, if not very high, is good here. Then water quality, this is quite an interesting one. Pretty much anything above normal here, which is the lowest option, is going to give you some weird stuttering and possible performance issues, sometimes major performance issues when you're underwater. So if that sounds like you, if you're spending some time underwater and hating every minute of it, come back here and drop your water quality down to normal. This is where I'll be leaving it on my setup. Then finally, grass quality push this down to normal for a slight performance boost pretty much no matter where you are, though especially outside. Then lighting quality this one doesn't seem to have too much of an impact, especially with ray tracing turned on. For that reason, ultra is just fine. Reflection quality, however, even though I have ray traced reflections set to high, this option in particular takes my FPS from around 116 to 125, 126, so about a 10 FPS boost, which is maybe 9%, simply by moving this from ultra to normal. From normal, 124 to high, 125, 124 to very high, 121. One, then ultra 116 high is probably as high as I would go here though of course if we check out reflections here you can see the telescope reflecting in the glass over here as well as the room behind us so there you go from high to ultra there's practically no visual difference for the most part this fire in the background doesn't seem to be showing on any of these options so that's a little weird but anyways I'd probably stick around high here then shadow quality, even with ray traced shadows turned on, 127 ish FPS, very high to normal. We're still pretty much exactly where we were before. For that reason, leave this on very high, and that's fine. This also unlocks high resolution shadows and extended shadows below, which I would recommend for visual and aesthetic reasons, long shadows turned on. You shouldn't see too much of a performance impact here at all. High resolution shadows, leave this turned off for better performance and extended shadow distance. I've heard about this causing issues with 5M, but as we don't have 5M just yet, cranking this up should make the game a bit more immersive and performance wise, there's only gonna be a small FPS cost, if anything at all. Moving down to post FX, the only thing I'd really change here is lowering motion blur to pretty much nothing, personal preference, and in-game depth of field as well to off, just so I don't feel like I need glasses. Ambient occlusion is noticeably turned off if you're using ray traced ambient occlusion. If you're not, HBAO is probably a good option here. Then moving down to scene, population density and variety both have to do with pedestrians walking around. For the most part, pushing this down should lift some performance cost from your system, but of course it may be negligible, especially if you have a powerful CPU and enough VRAM. For the most part, I leave this turned up just out of personal preference, but that's pretty much it. Distance scaling can help a fight pop in and things like that. For the most part, leave this all the way up unless you're really fighting for a VRAM on your system. Then high detail streaming while flying, especially if you have a fast drive, such as an SSD, leaving this on is fine. And finally, extended distance scaling. You can raise the level of detail or LOD on objects further away. For the most part, this is just an extra performance cost with no real visual difference. Leave it all the way down and you're fine. And that's it. With these quick changes, I've now enabled ray tracing, upscaling, optimized our settings for at least this system, and the performance in-game should have seen a small boost. Of course, as well, the game looks really, really good with ray tracing enabled. Something I did notice was this window over here, moving up and down these stairs, looks okay with ray tracing. However, if I quickly turn off ray tracing, as such, moving up and down here, some really weird things start to happen. I'm not entirely too sure what that is or if it happened before, but there you go. Yeah, I would think the brand new ray tracing options are a very much warm welcome to the game, even though ray tracing is usually a very costly thing. But I'm happy sacrificing 136 FPS down to 116, 120-ish with ray tracing turned on for a much better looking game. That being said, there's a weird mishmash of things that do have ray tracing support and don't. Things like car mirrors don't actually work properly with ray tracing. So flicking to first person, somewhere where there's some light, 
you can see there's some sort of a reflection in the mirrors up here and the wing mirrors, but for the most part, ray tracing turned on or off. They're pretty much exactly the same. This is the world without ray tracing and this is the world with ray tracing. So a very subtle difference, if much at all, you'll need to really squint and try to find different details to see exactly what's changed. But if you have the ability to play and want to play GTA 5 enhanced, ray tracing is definitely the way to go, just as things look, well, a little bit better. But anyways, that's really it. Rockstar have already patched the FPS cap to 120 on PC. You can see I'm comfortably getting above 120, or at least sometimes. Previously, you needed to add a launch option for that to work, but now it's just pretty much working off the bat, which is great. There's just a few shimmery effects and buildings and things like that, which is just artifacts of ray tracing at lower qualities. If we sacrifice just a few more FPS to push ray traced reflections to ultra quality, that shimmering effect definitely does vanish at the cost of a few more FPS, as of course, the reflection resolution has been raised quite a bit. But anyways, that's really it for this quick video. Hopefully you found it useful. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.